another day, another episode. This one I have mixed emotions about because as many of you know, I uh, blew the motor and in doing that, I started putting a path forward where I started parting out the car. Um, I announced that I was going to part ways with the F10 chassis and move on to a smaller, lighter chassis. But I got some good news. I'm keeping the F10. So, welcome to another episode. Let's get into it. So, as many of you heard, I popped the motor. Uh, a lot of people ask, what happened? Now, was it run 43 pounds of boost? You bet your ass I was. giving it all the boost all the gusto everything um head didn't lift head gasket was perfectly fine um so that was all good but when i lost compression i lost compression in two cylinders there was actually three cylinders that were not great um but the two that had the lowest amount of compression had the largest and most cracks in the actual sleeves so um, I didn't really blow up the motor. The car was still running. In the last couple of hits, it was still running like 5, 9, 60 to 130s. So it was still going fast. Um, it just wasn't as fast. And I knew something was wrong. So I brought the car in, did a compression check. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what was going on. Um, I was also over pressurizing the crankcase, which... Um, on the next build, I'm going to develop, I'm probably going to use the M18 valve cover or design my own. Um, and then that way eliminate the entire PCV system and then vent the crankcase through a, a breather system and through a catch can and then vent to atmosphere. So a lot of lessons learned with making high boost and all this power on this platform. No matter how much you close deck the block, if you don't put upgraded sleeves and encase the area that is in between the cylinders at the weakest point of each cylinder wall, they are going to crack. Um, as you can see here in this video, um, it cracked on almost every single cylinder except for obviously the furthest most cylinder on the back of the block and the one towards the front of the block. All right, so as we can see we did experience some cylinder cracking so this is obviously a known weak point for the n55 and here we see it happening multiple on every cylinder so this is clearly proof this one's okay because it's not that one's obviously really bad so this is obviously proof that with the m55 you have to sleeve the cylinders a lot of people asked me my opinions on the epoxy closed deck and asked how it, how it was holding up and honestly unless you're planning on making over 750 800 wheel horsepower i would leave this block open decked um, because the main concern is obviously in between these cylinders. Unless you're able to create support for the sleeve and the cylinder itself, you're going to experience this cracking like I did. There's plenty of N55s uh, still out there making 7, 750 wheel horsepower on open decks and not experiencing this issue. So this is clearly something that happens with high boost and high power. But if you're going to do it, do it right. Take the block to CSS or VAC and have them 
do the proper closed decking procedures and re-sleeve the block. Other than that, I would just leave it open deck and run it. Let's see if I got any of them. Obviously the ones that are not on the, having that area where it's has more support where the sleeve goes in. I don't have any cracks there. You can't really see with that one, but there's no cracks there. It's only the in-betweens. So, yep. This is just from high boost and the weakness of the steel sleeves. So they're not like the aluminum ones in the S55s. So um, with heat, they crack. And I think that in that, I would still recommend sleeving the block. So um, yeah, I was running, the car was running really fast. I ran a 575 in the 60 to 130. That's pretty good for a car that weighs 4,210 pounds with me in it, um, weighted at the drag strip, so that is an accurate weight. Um, but what I want people to understand is, is that that car was actually, this car was actually faster than that. My 60 to 110 was actually faster than Steve at Wedge Performance's 5.5 run, but I had an overboost in the log, and at that exact point, I had a throttle closure. So my 110 to 130 dropped off significantly. So the car was on pace to run like a 5.4, maybe a 5.3. It was, it was fast. So um, it was cool to think that obviously I didn't get to put the car on the dyno, but based off of the calculation that a lot of people use for your 60 to 130s and weight, this car is putting down over 850 wheel. So that's pretty impressive. Um, I think it's a pretty big feat for the M55 platform. Um, you're starting to see this a lot more, but these guys are in much lighter chassis. And so they're able to do those same times even faster. Um, I think I'm trying to remember the kid's name. Tim, I think is his name. He just ran a 498. Um, but I think he's in a three series or a two series chassis. So obviously there's like 500 pounds right there in weight. So I was going against the grain and you know, it, it, it made me think maybe I need to ditch this chassis and go to a lighter chassis. So after I'd already started parting out the car, um, I sold almost everything. I sold the engine, um, rotating assembly. I sold the transmission. I sold, I mean, that's all that's left. I sold the brakes. I sold the wheels. Um, I sold pretty much everything off the car. Um, interior is gone. So what I've decided to do is we're going to cut this thing up a little bit and we're going to make this car as light as possible. I'm shooting for 3,600 pounds. If we can get that, that would be amazing. Um, we're going to put a roll cage in it. It's going to be fully gutted with a single bucket. And um, I'm really going to push it this time. I was shooting for nines in the last uh, setup, which I'm pretty sure the car was capable of doing if I could have put it all together. Um, but the biggest thing I'm going to do, I'm going to convert this thing to all wheel drive. I'm not going to be fighting the rear wheel drive thing anymore. If we're going to be making north of 1200 horsepower, I'm going to need to put that to the ground. So in keeping the big body, I'm able to run a bigger tire up front and a larger tire in the rear than I would on the normal two or three series chassis. Another thing I like about having the bigger chassis is the wheelbase. The wheelbase is going to help keep the car stable. Um, at higher speeds and higher accelerations. So um, I think with this chassis, we lighten it up, and I'm talking like lighten it up. We're gonna take the sunroof out and cut the roof off. We're gonna put a carbon roof on it. We're gonna put carbon hood, carbon doors maybe, take all the glass out, all the interior out. We're gonna cut most of this frame out. Like in this section, I'm gonna cut this whole section in front of the shock tower out. We're removing the whole front end. This area is just going to be a single tube with a quick disconnect. So we're going to make some significant changes. I've already started. As you can see, I've already removed the blower motor, the windshield wiper motor, and all of this stuff. So we're going to start cutting a lot of this stuff out that we don't need. And uh, we're going to pull the AC system. The whole dash is coming out. Everything's coming out. The heater core, all of it. We're getting it all taken out. We're blocking it all off. So we're gonna try to make this car as light as absolutely possible. 
Now, I have a lot of people asking me, Tyler, why? Why not get a G80? Why not go to a 235? Why not get a B58? Everybody's doing it. Why do I want to be like everybody else? I like pain. I like suffering. Clearly, I like causing more strife and hurt and anger in my life and I like to make things difficult but in doing that I'm different I think there's only one other F10 car out there um, I think his name's Perry I sold him my fuel system that's possibly going to be able to push to where I push this platform in this car so I mean big ups to him he's shooting for a thousand I don't know if he'll get it but I, I hope he does and he's got an all-wheel drive car so um, there's hope there's going to be something a little bit different with mine. After talking to a couple people, and I've had conversations, I am going to go with Mike over at 4N. We're going to de-stroke this motor. I'm going to keep as much of the N55 as possible. But I think the smartest thing to do is to go with an S55 block. Because it is already closed decked, because of the aluminum sleeves and it's resistant to heat, you don't, you can run a stock head gasket. There's all these benefits for the S55. Um, I mean, RK Tunes to this day still says the S55 is the best BMW motor made hands down, even after he's owned the G80 and all that. So I think I can still run the S55 block. I'm going to run the N55 head. We're going to get it. Stage six ported, polished, springs, valves, everything done on it. Um, and then I'll still run, the manifold will be made for an N55 head. And then everything else will be N55. So, but to save myself the hassle of doing an N55 sleeve and closed deck and all that stuff, we're just gonna go with the S55, which is I mean, it's all identical. I can put the N55 head, oil pan, all the sensors, everything is pretty much the same uh, when it comes to what we're doing. Uh, just changing the block helps me not have to take on more costs and possibly more issues. So it's a little bit of cheating because it is an S55 block, but it's going to be an N55 everything else. Um, and then obviously the D-stroke kit we're already going to the max and we're changing so much that it's kind of taken away from the nostalgia of it just being an M55. Um, I did make all that power on the last motor with the cast crank. So as far as we know, cast crank can handle a thousand horsepower uh, at the crank. So you don't need an M235 crank. You don't need an S55 crank. That cast crank can handle plenty of power. I know I didn't make it for long, but if it was gonna break, it was going to be further down the road and unless you're planning on throwing more than 900 horsepower at the car that crank will do just fine we're working on a new beadlock for the front wheel so we're going to go to a 19 in the front with a beadlock a variant beadlock in the front we're going to cage it for eight fives and make it all legal for the track and uh see what we can make this thing do it's not going to be a fast build though it's going to take some time and I'm going to film as much of it as possible so I can include you guys in the processes and, and everything that's going on. So that's my goal is to, you know, bring you guys along on this journey again, this uh, revival of this chassis. Little side note, while I have this motor and this section still here, I'm, I just got the bare block rotating assemblies out of the block. So I have the block in the head. I'm gonna set it back in here. I'm gonna do my very best for all you F10 guys to make a top mount that does not require a bunch of fabrication. So that's my goal before I get anything else done, before I start cutting things away, to try to mock up a top mount turbo manifold. The bottom mount is a little bit more complicated and not as pretty and not as showboaty, but um, I'm gonna to try to do that for you guys before I start cutting this thing up and really going ham on this build. Something else that I'm dabbling with is, I think I'm gonna go twin turbo. So I think I'm going to make a twin turbo kit because once I cut this section away for the blower motor right here and open that up, I'm gonna have an area where I can put another turbo. So if I run a turbo back there and one up here, 
I think we could run a pretty cool twin turbo setup. Maybe run a G3770 or 900s. That's the plan. We'll see how that works out. Everything's obviously speculation until I'm able to get it done. Uh, um, I'm going to run into roadblocks. I'm going to have issues. It's just a part of it when nobody else has done something like this. So um, we're going to hope for the best and see what we can do. But I'm excited. So yeah, that's where we're at. That's how we're starting off 2025. Um, again, I appreciate everybody reaching out. I had so many messages after I said I popped the motor and was parting out the car. Um, it was, it had me depressed. I'm not going to lie. Um, I love helping people and, and people that reach out and have questions. I, I love answering questions and just giving my thoughts and opinions on things. But again, I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for reaching out and just kind of giving me their thoughts on how bummed they are about me maybe getting rid of the build. And thank you so much for, you know, like providing the info and all that stuff I got. I'm not joking close to a hundred messages with all that stuff. So Again, I appreciate everybody following me on this journey. We're going to keep it going, though, and we're going to get real fucking crazy with it. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I'm going to do another video soon uh, going over some of the things that I'm going to change and then possibly make a video, too, while I try to make the top mount for you guys to show you, you know, what kind of problems and packaging issues there are with building the top mount for this chassis. So until then... Thank you guys. Appreciate the support. Um, Inhouseperformance.com. If you need any M55 stuff, we're limited on stock right now. I'm going to take, once we're out of stock on some of this stuff, I am going to put a pause on that until we get moved and get re, um, resettled in, in the new home and the new shop. Well, I think that's enough talking for me for one day. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hit like and subscribe if this is the content you like or you want to see me continue to build this chaos. And that's it. I'm going to leave you guys with some 4N M55 9000 RPMs of glory. So hope you guys had a good start to your 2025. Stay safe out there, and we'll catch up with you guys soon. Take it easy. Bye.